what's going on guys so today in this video we are going to be talking about the fox valley models milwaukee roads class a hiawatha this is a model that i've been after for a number of years since i got back into model railroading and i'm so happy to finally have this model in my hands so before we get into the review of this model we must first learn about the history of the class a hiawatha the Milwaukee Roads Class A Hiawatha were a class of four of the 442 Atlantic type locomotives built by the American Locomotive Company between 1935 and 1937. The class were among the last of the Atlantic type to be built, not to mention probably the first Atlantic type to be built in over 20 years, yet they were the most powerful Atlantic type locomotive ever built. Along with the Class A's, six more Hiawatha locomotives will be built, which will be the Class F7 locomotives known as the F7 Hudsons. Stories have been told of the Class A locomotive getting really close to the world steam speed record of the engines reaching over 120 miles per hour. However, these records were never documented in the history books and Mallard eventually took the crown in 1938. Eventually, the Milwaukee Road started to purchase diesel locomotives. And once diesels replaced both the Class A's and the F7's, all 10 of these engines were withdrawn and cut up for scrap. Now before we get into the model, we gotta look at the packaging first. It features very nice packaging with the engine displayed at the window, so you can get at least a clear view of it of what it looks like. But the back does also have pretty nice printing as well. As you can see, it has a whole collection on there. I think there's six cars in total you can collect, but I could be wrong. And I believe what it says there is something about Fox Valley uh, celebrating 75 years of the Hiawatha at the time because this model did came out in I think 2010 I believe but anyways let's get this model out of the box as I slide the model out of its box you can see it comes in this awesome looking block of ice packaging is what a lot of people call it these days and a set of instructions which is really great if you ever want to get into this model However, there is something that is a little bit odd about these instructions, and I'll get to it in a minute. But other than that, it does come with instructions nonetheless. Getting this model out was not too tricky, but it was pretty tricky to slide the sleeve off. Because you can see at the end there, I sort of popped the back. But it is pretty easy to slide off, and there I am taking the model out of the packaging. And now onto the detail of the model, and I have to say, the detail on this model is absolutely fantastic. On the front here, we do have this iconic streamlining that everyone knows, not to mention the front with the printing, with the running number, and I would believe those would represent wings, I'm sure someone would tell me, but that's been applied super well to the model, as well as that marker light on the front there, along with the handrails. Looking down along the boiler, you can see a lot more molded detail as well as the Hiawatha nameplate. I believe the nameplate is part of the molding. It is not separately fitted, but it has been painted really nicely into that Hiawatha letter, which is excellent. Looking down at the cab, we can see the running number has been applied really well, as well as the classification underneath it, which is a class A. And we can see some glazing on the windows, along with separately fitted handrails and a door right there, which is not posable. It is molded onto the body, unfortunately, but it is still there nonetheless, which I think is pretty cool. Looking back at the front, there is a lamp I forgot to mention, which is powered by LED light. However, it does have a yellowish tone to it. But looking down at the top of the locomotive, you can see all this beautiful separately molded detail, along with the sand dome, the grills, the hatches, it just looks so fantastic. Looking at the whistles and safety valves, I actually don't know if they're made of metal, but I think they are just a little bit cold to the touch. But to be honest with you, I don't know what they're really made of. They look metal to me, but I wouldn't quote myself on that. But they are there and they are fine. They do the job. They're okay. Going back towards the cab, they do have some pretty nice glazing on there. However, there is just one thing that I just cannot understand. It's this guy right here. I'm sure that's there for a reason, but can anyone please point that out what that is to me? I just want to know. That's how my model came. I'm sure everyone's model has that too, but I just thought I'd point that out just in case mine isn't, you know, like a fault or anything or someone did it. I don't know. Just thought I'd point it out. However, looking inside the cab, you can just see some interior detail in there. It's not the easiest to see, but if I do turn on that flashlight, you can see that interior detail really well. 
I think it's just the gauges that's been painted out, but it's better than nothing nonetheless. And it's great to see some interior cabs painted, especially in a closed cab like this one. It's not really that noticeable, especially when it's running around, but it is there nonetheless. Also trying to zoom in on the builder's plate, but it's so small my camera can't even pick it up. Now looking at the wheels, as you can see, the front truck, the driving wheels, and the rear pony truck are all beautifully molded. Even the axles have been painted out, and the side rods look nice and realistic. However, I'm not really sure about this pony truck in the back. It may be a realistic thing, but it does look a bit too basic to me. At least that's just me. I don't know if it's realistic. It may be, but I just thought I'd point that out. Now moving on to the tender. The tender does have some pretty good detail on it, yet it's so basic at the same time but not too basic. I think I say that because of the streamlined shape that it has, but other than that, the tender does actually look really nice. Looking at the top, we can see a hatch up in the further left corner of the tender, along with the oil hatch where the oil would go and a little walk path, which is nicely etched. We can also see a few more hatches and a little, I wouldn't say cavity there, but you guys get the idea, it is there. I think that might be where the water will be stored if I'm not mistaken. The back is where the detail really shines through. You can see some sort of corridor tender thingy, if that makes any sense, along with the step ladder in the back, as well as two marker lights and a metal knuckle coupler at the back, as well as two separately fitted applied handrails and two step ladders on the sides of the tender. Detail wise, that is it. This locomotive is beautifully detailed. Sure, it has some molded details here and there, but it just looks so fantastic. The streamlining does make it look a little bit basic, but you can forgive it for that because it's streamlined. Yes, not all streamlined locomotives are basic as this one is, but I think even though this one really is basic, especially the real prototype, it stands out beautifully. It still catches your eye. It is just a fantastic model. One more thing I almost forgot to point out at the tender, I did wish they would add the little ballet dancer thing that they have on the tender, but it's no big deal this model doesn't have it. I'm sure it had it taken on and off at some point during its lifetime. And now here are at least a few cons of this model, which I will point out right now. In the instructions, it does tell you how to remove the body. The instructions are crystal clear, don't get me wrong. The tender body is the easiest to remove. The local body, however, is not. It says so in the instructions on what to do. It literally tells you to remove the sand dome and the little hollow piece right there in front of the safety valves and whistles. During filming, I really did try to remove those to remove the local body, but I just could not. I just really didn't want to risk damaging the loco body while trying to do that, so I just gave up in the process. However, mechanism-wise, this thing isn't that bad. When I took off the base keeper plate, you can see it's driven by one wheel and it has separate brass bearings for smooth performance. The base plate is held on by four screws that hold it down all together, which is fantastic. But this thing does have traction tires right here, as you can see. Now, I do not really like traction tires at all just because they spread dirt and grime around the track. Not to mention they deteriorate over time, but I just wish they would make the model at least a little bit heavier just so it doesn't need traction tires. But if they're there, they're there. There's nothing you can do. And at long last, we get to see the performance. How does this thing run? As you can see, the model runs really well, and you can see that headlight shining nice and bright as it goes by. However, there is one thing that it is not good at, and you'll see why.
Now, I'm not gonna lie, the model does do really good at slow speed. However, if you get to the more higher speeds, that's where it gets smoother, but it is a little bit worse in reverse. But any slower than that, it is just juddery. So I would suspect this thing does have a three pole motor inside, but I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt. Maybe the previous owner replaced it or whatever. I'm not so sure. And that concludes it. Sure, this model does have a little bit of pros and cons here and there, but I love this thing to death. It is my prized possession and I cannot be happier to own it. Now I will bear it in mind, when this thing does do a terrible slow speed, it did come with the DCC decoder when I got this. It came with the TCS wild sound decoder, but I took it out just two days after I got it. However, I did take out the decoder because I feel like it wasn't responding very well with my controller or my controller wasn't responding very well to it. Either way, I took it out and it's now permanently DC. But nonetheless, after hunting down this model for years, whether it be River Rossi, Fox Valley, or Nickel Plate products, I cannot be happier to finally own a Hiawatha in my hands. But anyway, that's all for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did like it, please do leave it a like. It helps me out a lot. Please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and turn on the bell notifications so that way you won't miss out on every single video I upload. And with that, I will see you guys next time. Alright, take care everybody.